Tenchu, Ghost of Tsushima, Shadows Die Twice is a game about the rise of samurai Batman, a man who'd risk it all to save his people, the complete antithesis to the year 2020. During the Mongol invasions of the late 1200s, yes I checked, samurai lord Jin, I mean Jin, I mean Jin, Lord Sakai is one of the few remaining samurai. Along with his uncle, Lord Shimura, they must stop the invasion, as the Mongols outnumber the Japanese on some Helm's Deep type shit. After some disrespect so brutal that it changed the game from black and white to color, the samurai take the offensive, seemingly forgetting that arrows had been invented by this time. After getting Commander Irwin, Jackie Chan and Uncle are the only remaining survivors. So, naturally, their plan is to run right at the commander of the Mongol forces and take him out. Koten Khan spouts the good old villain monologue and performs the equivalent of a pistol whip on Lord Shimura, but with a katana. The game then requires a quick time event to bring Jin back to life, but I'm terrible at quick time events, so he just stays dead forever. Jin put a tactical insertion down, so he respawns and goes looking for his armor but he finds love instead in the form of a cold-blooded murderer named Yuna. Yuna helps Jin recover his sword after she pawned it to pay the electricity bill, and Jin has a flashback in the middle of his village being plundered because we need a tutorial section. Jin snaps out of it just in time not to be impaled by Mr. Pokey and fights his way to the stables. I chose the black horse because my dumb racism brain thought it would be the fastest, and I name it Kage because that's, well, that's just a gangster ass name. Yuna and Jin then ride off to rescue Lord Shimura, with the plan of walking straight in and just beating every Mongol along the way. A plan that worked perfectly last time. Except it doesn't, and Jin runs into Kotokan again. It's time to duel. After an ass whooping Mike Tyson would be proud of, Kotokan flings Jin off the bridge, and Jin has a dream of that time he was literally the worst son ever. Okay, second worst son ever. Well, it's not a competition, all right? Jin survives, experiences some Pocahontas wind shit, and makes his way back to Yuna. They realize they need a better plan than just walking into places and getting stomped out, so they decide to grab some reinforcements first. Title card, beautiful scenery. Jin's first stop is the Hot Springs, where he's looking for Ishikawa, his old bowmaster. Ishikawa is willing to join him, but only if Jin helps him shake some loan sharks that are after his crippling gambling debt. Jin agrees, and Ishikawa teaches him how to use the bow in 5 seconds because he's apparently Hawkeye or something, I don't know. Ishikawa joins the squad, and after some Jin personal time, he heads back to Yuna to help her rescue her brother Taka, who's in prison for spending a little bit too much time in the Super Smash Bros. community. Realizing that he can't just walk in and kill everybody face to face again like he thought, Jin puts his honor aside and just fucking absolutely murders this guy. This awakens a bloodlust in Jin, and he becomes a full-on serial killer, murdering everyone in his way to Taka. As it turns out, Taka had been moved to a supermax prison for his crimes, so that entire murder spree was for nothing. After two of the most anticlimactic duels of all time, Jin goes to recruit Lady Masako, only to be jumped by her hired assassins. Realizing that they failed, Masako attempts to kill Jin herself, but can't do it because he's so damn sexy. Masako says she'll join the goof troop, but only on the condition that Jin help her kill a monk, because she's been reading too much Frederick Nietzsche, and she's starting to take his quotes literally. Jin agrees, a monk gets dunked, and Milf Mama joins the gang. While taking a stroll in the forest to clear his mind, Jin runs into his old pal Ryuzo, and they reminisce on the good times over a beer and a few murders. Ryuzo's straw hat gang is starving to death, and agrees to join Jin's fight if he can find them some devil fruit. They search through an entire fort and naval base, but when they can't find food, Ryuzo still agrees to help. <laughs> wow, what a good friend. I just know they'll be friends forever. Yuna gets this weird drunkard to break into the prison her brother's in in exchange for toe picks, and the gang pulls the old Trojan horse gambit to get to Taka. In a weird stroke of luck, Taka's a blacksmith, no not that kind, and says that if we can find him a forge, he'll make something that can break into the Khan's castle. So, one duel on LSD and a couple rescue missions later, we find a forge. And Jin, much like early 2000s rapper Styles P, becomes the ghost. Good luck getting that reference. 
after a cutscene with way too much sexual tension, it's time to wrestle in the castle. Ryuzo and the Straw Hats didn't show up when it was time for the siege, but I'm sure it's fine and nothing bad will happen. Uh oh guys, I think something bad is gonna happen. Ryuzo pulls a Judas and tries to kill Jin, but fails and alerts all the enemy guards like an extreme pussy. A few slashies and stabbies later, and Uncle Iroh is freed, and we retake the castle. Coton Khan retreats north, and takes over a new castle in a scene so brutal, I can't even make a joke about it. Except yes I can, because this motherfucker gets the Joan of Arc treatment, and gets burned like Michael Jackson's hair in a Pepsi commercial. Shamor thanks Jin for rescuing him, but reminds him to be a good Jedi and not go to the dark side. After reclaiming another fort, Shamora asked Jin to help him build an army to finally beat Kotal Khan. And on the way to do that, I run into a duel that I failed so many times that when I finally won, I had to give him the Halo 3 treatment. After some naval escapades, Jin and Yuna attempt to convince the people of Arakiri to hand over their army even though they're a rival gang and hate the Shamoras for killing Lil Bao Bao a few years prior. The Mongolians attack and the ghost does what the ghost does best, murdering way more people than necessary. But that convinces the city to join his cause so you know whatever I guess. Jin's final stop before the battle is his father's grave. You know, the one he let die? Yeah, that one. Jin yoinks his father's armor and asks this old lady to make poison for him, finally succumbing to the murderous evil within. Hey everybody, Tevin here. Just a reminder that if you liked the video, please consider liking, subscribing, and following me on social media. You don't have to decide right now or anything, just, you know, something to think about, you know. Anyway, cool, back to the video. Jin finds out where Ryuzo is and is ready to give him assisted seppuku when Taka shows up wanting to help. Using Taka as a distraction, Jin sneaks in and confronts his frenemy when oh no, surprise, it was all a setup. Again. Both Jin and Taka get captured and when given a chance to earn his freedom, Taka fucks up and ends up taking a katana like how I take glizzies. To the throat. Jin then breaks free with complete ease. Wait, what the fuck? Why didn't he do that earlier? Jin breaks free, Yuna finds Taka, and together they vow to murder everyone in the game together. With everything in place, the war between Lord Shimura and Kotal Khan begins, and it looks like it's going well for the samurai, until it isn't. Jin wants to save his allies' lives by putting hella lean and fentanyl in the Mongols' water supply, but Uncle Honor over here says that drugs are for losers. Someone calls Steve Harvey because we've got a family feud. Jin pulls a Danny Phantom and goes ghost anyway, putting enough codeine in the Mongols water supply to make Pimp C roll in his grave. After killing literally everyone with the poison, Jin looks for the Khan, only to find Ryuzo for the 30th time instead. Friends forever, Ryuzo said. Yeah, friends forever, Jin replied. Shimura finds out and was like, dude, what the fuck, I just said don't do this, and Jin was like, Whatever man, you're not even my real dad. Jin gets sent to jail for talking back, but gets broken out because Kotal Khan took another castle up north, big shocker. After escaping, his horse dies, he finds out that Mongols learned his poison, and immediately gets poison himself. Talk about a Monday, am I right fellows? <laughs> Yuna saves his ass again, they recruit a third ragtag team of scamps who are okay with going to war, and the final battle is ready to begin. After murdering all opposition like the Jeffrey Epstein case, Jin finally makes it to Kotal Khan, who, after losing, decides to throw poison in Jin's face. Somehow this doesn't kill Jin, and he pushes onto the boat to immediately fight the Khan again. But this time, Kotal has reinforcements. Eventually, Kotal gives Jin some head, I mean his head, and peace is restored to the land. A truly happy ending. Except it's not the ending at all. Lord Shimura asks to see Jin one last time, and after taking Jin to his father's grave, Shimura tells him that only one of them will be leaving alive. It's Shimura versus Sakai, nephew versus uncle, honor versus sacrifice, 
Dom versus Sub in a battle that is genuinely so damn good that I can't actually spoil it. You'll just have to play the game to find out. Thanks for watching. This is now tied for my favorite game of all time, and I'm super happy how this video turned out. If you guys liked it, please like, comment, or subscribe if you want to see more from me in the future. Thank you guys so much for 35,000 subscribers, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. When the game sells them, my man's in the cell, and it's too close to hell, and the pain's overwhelming. Only thing he left was his name for his children. Shit hurt me bad, said the shame almost killed him. Dog, you ain't the blame, no, the game get us real thin. Used to have things that got brains.